Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Respect and Pray Show with your host, the one and only Miguel Mike Medina, Triple M. In this episode, I have a guy who is just doing a lot in the sports media world. He's a sports media producer, um, a very dedicated digital and editorial producer. Um, he's worked for so many companies. We're talking about CBS Sports, um, NBC Sports, um, MLB, Disney streaming services, the list goes on and on and on. And he is just tenacious. He's doing so much. He also has a podcast with someone that um, that I got to interview for the Respect and Pray Show as well. So this is a very good and insightful interview, especially for those who want to work in sports, who are interested in sports media. You never know who will inspire you. And hopefully after this interview, you'll get motivated and inspired to do what you have to do to start breaking into sports media. So take a look at this interview. It's a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to present to you, Mr. Joseph Calabrese. Joseph, how's it going, man? Thank you for joining. You're welcome. Uh, very excited. Don't know what to expect, uh, but I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Um, so I got to start from the top. What made you want to get into sports media? Well, when you're younger, you like playing sports, you like being an athlete, right? So oh, based on a lot of conversations that my friend Nick and I, uh, our podcast is, you know, I'm right. So that's how you kind of stumbled on and found us. Um, so based on a lot of the conversations we've had with a lot of people who work in sports media, it, it's very common to not be the athlete, but to want to kind of get into it and, and do sports, uh, so when I was younger, I really used to like writing. And then throughout high school and college, I had a knack for writing. Uh, I studied communications when I went to college at Marist College. Uh, but as I got older, I kind of phased myself out of the writing and I kind of wanted a little bit more. Uh, and eventually, Nick and I, we started the podcast and we're hoping that what we've done so far with the podcast uh, acts as a, a springboard and a, and a better platform uh, for us to eventually move on into bigger and better uh, sports media related jobs in the industry as time goes on. How's it like working with Nick? I love it. Let me tell you something. Nick and I, we have a lot of similar overlapping interests. That said, we are two, I wouldn't say polar opposite people, but the appearance, I think, for somebody who's listening to us, whether it just be a casual conversation among friends, with our friends, or people who are listening to us as they're listening to the podcast, I think they could quickly figure out uh, some of our differences, right? So between the both of us, appearance-wise, makes a little bit taller, it's a little bit We'll say thinner, like you're, uh, I'm the shorter between the two. Uh, he's got like a lighter skin complexion. I've got a darker skin complexion. Um, I'm a little bit of the wordier person between the two. My answers are always a little more long winded and detailed and, and wordy. He keeps everything short and sweet. Uh, he's got an incredibly dry sense of humor. He's very quick very quick-witted, uh, always has an incredibly smart response, and I'm definitely more of the natural uh, goofball. I kind of try to go along with other people, and again, it could be family, friends, uh, people that we know, guests that we've had on the podcast, uh, and he's just, he's got no patience, right? He's, so again, it, it's interesting because again, we're very, very similar, but at the same time, we're very, very different, especially when it comes to the appearances. So I think when that comes to being friends, the friendship, the working partnership that we're doing with the podcast, uh, I think it's in in incredible to see the, 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 yeah, the dynamic between us. I mean, hey, sometimes it works, you know, opposites attract the yin and the yang. So um... Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, we're not totally yin and yang. But I think when you're watching 
specifically, you know him, right? And you see us interview the guests, the kinds of questions that he asks versus the kinds of questions that I ask, the kind of rapport that he has with the guests, the kind of rapport that I have with the guests. It, it's incredibly different. So in that sense, it's like like uh, like chocolate and vanilla ice cream. You know, like you're right, the yin and the yang there. <laughs> Two different flavors. <laughs> All right. So you worked in multiple places, CBS Sports, MLB, Disney Streaming Services. Um, describe your experience working at MLB as media management associate. What was your what would what um what was your responsibilities there, and how was the culture like? Yeah, so I uh, when I did media management there, a lot of it was so when I worked for MLB Network, uh, I worked in Secaucus, New Jersey. So that is where the MLB Network building is. NHL Network is in the same building. Uh, so for Disney streaming, I was doing a lot of stuff with NHL.com. So the media management position, a lot of it was familiarity with working with digital assets uh, on the website, working within the app itself, and kind of doing game-related stuff, which includes RTH work, which is RTH uh, stands for real-time highlight. So writing up stuff, uh, writing up highlights in particular, uh, writing up network clips. A lot of the duties and the responsibilities of the position as it relates to both the websites, there was a lot of overlap. So a lot of people who worked on the MLB.com side of things uh, would eventually migrate to the NHL.com side of things in the winter and the cold weather months when work for that season and that sport started thinning out a little bit. So a lot of us uh, through that overlap ended up becoming really, really good friends and people that I worked with in particular uh, on the NHL side of things, they had started off working for Major League Baseball when MLB was operating out of the fan cave and their older studios in Chelsea, in Chelsea Market, that has since, um, again, they moved the entire operation across the river to Secaucus. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, a lot of stuff related to digital assets and the website. Uh, NHL, I got to do a lot of work within the app. So you organize video flow and stuff like that. You send out push notifications, kind of see what works, what doesn't work. And uh, so what I will say about my other stops is uh, intern at NBC Sports. Uh, you mentioned that I worked at CBS Sports. I had a stop with the NHL for the first time, more in a, more in a uh, in an editorial role before the media management side. And from my experience, I I got to do a lot of different things with a lot of different major companies. And even though necessarily I didn't get to work on air in, in any kind of capacity at my previous stops, I was always around seeing how not only like the desk side and the digital side of things work, but also the studio side, right? I got to see all the different studios and NBC sports on the campus over there when I interned back when I went to college, uh, when I worked for CBS and I worked as a freelancer, uh, a lot of our stuff that we would do, uh, especially on the weekends during college, the, the height of college season. So college football, college basketball, we used to work out of the bullpen, which is, um, the the room outside this the the studio kind of set aside next to it. Uh, different rows of computers, a bunch of TVs, uh, researchers in there, people uh, helping produce the shows, the producers themselves, the hosts coming in and out. So throughout the course of all of my stops, right? So that includes NBC, CBS, and then we'll get back to MLB and NHL. It's like you're always around people who are well known. Uh, who are working for these companies, who are doing on air stuff, the studio analysts, the broadcasters, uh, stuff like that. So wherever I stopped, it was a fun stop. Working in sports in general is difficult, landing the job and and ultimately kind of settling in anywhere because you're always bouncing around. But no matter where you go, it's fun. And it's exciting to to meet other people. And whether they're it's just like you and I, uh, or again, people who are producing uh, who are doing video uh, equipment work, who are actually in the, the, the desk chairs themselves and on air. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Yes, it certainly is, especially when we're talking about sports. 
it doesn't matter whether it's front or behind the camera. The important thing is that when you work for sports and if you meet people that connect just like you in sports and or even are smarter and, and better than you, you want to be around those because they can, they're going to make you step your game up. So, sure. I mean, me personally, I love networking. I love networking. I love networking not only people in the same department as me, but also that share that same passion of sports, just like me. And those are the people I like to be around with. And it's always important to be initiative. It's not always about just sitting down and wait for the light to come. You got to go out there and get it. Absolutely. You hear this, the expression all the time, a rising tide will lift all boats. And one incredible thing that I could say regarding every single stop that I've made is that, again, whether I'm speaking to somebody whose job is similar to me, which is more or less, you know, we'll say behind the scenes role, even if you're not necessarily working on TV or anything like that. But even when you get to speaking to the people who are the higher ups within these companies, again, people who are doing on air stuff, uh, the analysts and the broadcasters of the world, I would say 90, 95 and above, nine to 99% of anybody that I've ever met wherever I went was either incredibly super nice in the brief period of time that I knew them or was incredibly helpful, right? Even if, again, that person was doing something that was didn't directly pertain to what I did, they were still very warm, welcome, opening, friendly, um, everything uh, that this podcast is right now. By the way, I didn't want to say this at the beginning. Uh, I love your shirt. The Power Rangers shirt, I'm a huge Power Rangers guy. So immediately I, I had good vibes going into this. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Man, I mean, growing up with the Power Rangers, and it's crazy that recently they turned 30. So yeah, for me, so man, that, sh that show was, um, played a big role in my childhood. I used to so. have all the figures, uh, used to watch mostly all the episodes, right? Dressed up as a Power Ranger when I was younger, one of my best friends growing up, he still got the picture of him uh, dressed up as the Red Ranger when he was younger, which is hysterical. Uh, all the news, like the new movie that came out, uh, I mean, not a couple of years ago, it was like five or six years ago now. Uh, but even that, like the, the newer movie that they had where Elizabeth Banks played Rita Repulsa, uh, I thought it was solid. You know, I think it was, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, so again, yeah, when you're... Power Rangers fan, your Power Rangers fan for life. Uh, but I, I I grew up on like 90s Nickelodeon and, and stuff like that and uh, used to watch Saturday morning cartoons. So all that that stuff is right up my alley as well. College basketball, college football, which one would interest you to cover the event or just to be there at the crowd? National title game for college football or national title game for college basketball? Wow, that's a good question. Ah, I have to think about this for two seconds. Uh, I want to say the final four. So I want to say college basketball. Even though I prefer football as a sport, I think the atmosphere of the final four is slightly different uh, because there's a certain pageantry to it. And then, as you know, when the NCAA tournament concludes, they always do one shining moment and all that stuff. So uh, so long as the game itself is competitive and it's close and it's good, uh, because I think in, in the case of a football game, if it's not really competitive or close, I think it's easier to take yourself out of a football game that's got like a, like a two or three touchdown lead as opposed to a basketball game that's within, we'll say, three to six points. You understand? So... I'd say the final four in the national championship game of college basketball. Favorite holiday, Thanksgiving or Christmas? Christmas. I uh, I come from an Italian family, uh, as does Nick. So Christmas Eve is a very, very important holiday uh, when it comes to Italians because we have the seven fishes on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We celebrate it. But Christmas Day is more of the the relaxing of the, 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 the two sets of days. 
uh, but it's like a package deal, right? And that's kind of what Thanksgiving has become because now people, they celebrate Thanksgiving and then they take that long weekend. So Friday you're off and then you take the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, but for the most part, I've never been a huge fan of the food on Thanksgiving. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I'm not a huge turkey fan, but that's not really unpopular. You know, as I got older, I, I noticed a lot of people weren't really as keen on turkey as I was either. Um, so the, the day itself is fine. It's fun. It's nice to just relax and eat for the day. Uh, but I like everything that surrounds Christmas way more than Thanksgiving. Top three sports venues that you haven't been to yet, but you would like to go. Sports venues. Yes. Okay. That's a good question too. Uh, okay. I got things. So, give me like two seconds to just think a little bit here. Take your time. Okay. Uh, I would say, believe it or not, up there in the top three would probably be Wrigley Field. Because I've been to Fenway Park, right? So you see the the old school stadiums, the stadiums that have been around for over 100 years. Uh, I have friends who have been to Wrigley Field, and they say it's like this incredible experience. So uh, it's something that you absolutely have to do. Uh, so I would definitely like to do that one day. Uh, wow, I had to think about this a little bit. Uh, definitely Wembley Stadium. So I'm a huge pro wrestling fan. Uh, not WWE, but the second biggest company that exists right now is called All Elite Wrestling. Uh, they have the deal with Turner and everything. So they just had one of their bigger events uh, in Wembley Stadium, not this past weekend, Labor Day weekend, the weekend prior. Uh, so the atmosphere over there looked tremendous. Uh, I have an older cousin and I have somebody who is a friend of a, my roommate who I went to college with who are huge Manchester United fans. So uh, not so much. Uh, that's more or less like a bucket list item. It's like when you go to Europe one day, hopefully you get the opportunity to see it and you can get to cross it off the list. Uh, but it's just this historical place. So much history to it. Uh, the venue itself is beautiful. It's amazing when it comes to sporting events and concerts. So, um, again, so just to knock it off the bucket list, I would want to do that. And see, it's different because a lot of arenas, you, you go to one arena, it's kind of the same, but every arena for a different team is different, right? So it's like for somebody who doesn't live in New York, they could say Madison Square Garden, even though I've been to Madison Square Garden thousands of times. Uh, so. What I will say is, in terms of the arena itself, it's probably like not a spectacular building. Um, but from what I've heard, to go to Bell Center in Montreal to catch a Montreal Canadiens game, because the atmosphere and the presentation, the pregame presentation that they do before the game is so extensive, and it's it's got like a little little bit of everything, right? So it's got like a little video work, a lot of. Uh, the history of the team uh, every year. I know somebody who ends up going to Montreal for a trip, uh, whether they go for uh, like a Rangers game or something. And they say it's, it's absolutely spectacular. It's amazing. You have to do it. You have to go there at some point. Um, so the third one, I'm kind of cheating a little bit, but I would like to go to see the Rangers play the Canadians at Bell Center in Montreal uh, at some point. All right, that concludes this game. So my final question to you is, where can we follow you and your work? So you can follow me on Twitter at jcalabrese1. You can follow the podcast at the same, uh, at YKIR podcast. Uh, I still call it Twitter. I don't know anybody who calls it X yet, but we'll get there. Uh, as for Instagram, I'm Joey Cals on Instagram. So that's Joey, uh, C-A-L-Z. Uh, also YKIR podcast, continue to follow the podcast, uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, where, you know, are my podcast. So if you were to search, you know, are my podcast in the search bar, we would, uh, we would come up. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to do the interview. This was fun. I had to think about a couple of things for a little bit. Uh, but for anybody who's listening to this, uh, my friend, Nick and I, 
Our podcast is You Know I'm Right. We uncover the origin stories and get professional career oriented interviews for the guests that we had on uh, we have on. It started with just sports media and former athletes and people, and eventually it expanded beyond that. We have entertainers who come on with us, some musicians and comedians, had people who have come on in the world of business and finance, uh, entrepreneurs have been on with us, a lot of reality TV stars. So if you are a fan of shows like Survivor, if you're a fan of uh, shows like Big Brother, if you're fans of shows like The Challenge, uh, we've had people on with us from CBS, those reality shows, and TV, Bravo TV, uh, TLC. So our reality episode, uh, reality TV episodes ends up doing pretty good as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can find us on all major platforms. And uh, yeah, so just follow the podcast. And uh, thanks again for having me on. This was a lot of fun. I appreciated the time. Joseph, you know, thank you for um, wanting to do this interview. The purpose of the show is to give people their flowers, their respect for what they're doing in their careers, in the industry. Um, I salute you to everything that you're doing. You have an unblemished resume. I'm looking forward to seeing more from you for these next couple of years. Best of luck to you and Nick. Continue with the success of the podcast. I'll be tuning into that. And um, that's what we're here for. We're here to support. We're here to network and, you know, appreciate and support people that while it's still here, while it's still at it. So best of luck to you. And, um, you know, thank you once again. You as well. I appreciate your time. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. I certainly did so. Now, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And you guys know my motto. Have mutual respect, mutual love, and mutual admiration. So, stay tuned for the next episode of the Respect and Praise Show.